I need a hundred dollar, no. <laughs> Somebody gave a $50 bill last night. Hey, if you gave a dollar, that's good. Amen. <laughs> I haven't even asked. While I'm doing that, uh, I want to say I've enjoyed being here and Pastor Rowan and Kathy and, and all of you. You've been so kind and uh, good to meet these new missionaries. And the food's been great. Amen. And I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that you're praying for my wife. Uh, Brother Kennedy wrote some stuff out today that's helped him. That Wow. And... Uh, can you can you kind of stack them together? <laughs> yeah, just give that to Brother Yeah, fix that up. Caleb's coming. Um, anyway, pray for my wife. She's uh, she stays in pain twenty four hours a day and. Two hundred and six. Have mercy. Mercy. That's a. The real one. What's that guy? Uh, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> I got two of them. Well, I think I'll go home. No. <laughs> uh, if you're visiting, this I'm not keeping it. Okay. And I told Pastor Day, uh, this isn't money changing in the church. This is sharing. Tell you, brother, in your profession, you get accused of a lot, don't you? <laughs> you know. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't know. When it comes to money, brother, you just do what you, God tells you to do. Amen. Well, I had to wait and get some more. Oh. This isn't being put on tape, TV and all that. I, I don't know. Are we paid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 50 and how much was that? 256. 256. 256. 256. 256. 256. 247 the first night. 50, I mean, Sunday morning. 55, 84, 83. 175. How much? 256. I want to make sure I can, you know, you know I didn't keep it. Now, to show you my heart's right and so you won't talk nasty about me. Oh, wow, you're giving that. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, add 444. Add that. So you won't talk bad about me when I leave. I'm going to put a dollar in. <laughs> but I, I, I got a conviction. I'm going to make it five. <laughs> I was doing this in uh, New York City, Queens Church. Uh, it's called All Nations. 18 nationalities in that church. 706? So good. Is that the total? Thank you, sir. Sit over there and when I subtract it, you subtract. Uh, and see, I was going to double it. So that's why I just asked for one dollar. Because God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> and uh, the first service, I got seven bucks. Some kid jumped up, he didn't have me say, well, I'll give you five dollars. Next service, the same thing happened. So the third service, they met in the American Legion Hall uh, Sunday morning in a dead uh, a Presbyterian church that was open on Sunday night. So we were meeting there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I told the preacher, I said, look, I'm going to double this. That's why I just want a dollar. 
So I asked for it, and he, on the platform, he gave me a 10, just smile. So I had to give away about $40 of my own money. So I decided I'm not going to double it. Because if I would have kept up with that, that's a big double. Okay, here we go. Brother Alton. This is a second chance. Amen. God bless you, brother. You know, you know whose money this is? Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> you gave it to me. The Lord, uh, Ananias the fire said, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? I got, I got scripture. My <laughs> right, brother Skip. Brother Skip here. Brother Skip. You know, he has mints for us in the back. <laughs> I, I like that. This is for city refuge. City refuge. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 All right, I want all the missionary kids to stand up. Caleb. You got a little two in the back. <laughs> <laughs> two that are sick. Yeah, give give uh, LaRue. brother Larue. LaRue. How many remember last Larue? He got saved, and when he did, his wife burned all his uh, trophies and left him. <coughs> how many how many missed kids we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? That's two. That's three. Make them take all these ones. Give them all ten, and then uh, give Brother LaRue. La I haven't had so much fun since Christmas. Amen. Amen. You know what we got for Christmas the year before last? I didn't want to die on my wife and she not be a happy camper. So uh, we looked in the paper, and I bought grave plots. <laughs> And uh, it's where you bury one on top of the other. This couple got a divorce, so I got a good deal. <laughs> and uh, so our anniversary was January. So what I did, I, I bought in, I bought into a funeral home. How much more you need? You need what? Four more. Well, four more dollars. Oh, you mean four more of that? Yes. Oh, mercy. You got enough. You got. Uh, you know what I found out about uh, the funeral home business? You're not paying a funeral home. You're, all you're doing is getting life insurance. And uh, if they go belly up, then the law says some other funeral home has to take that. But what you do, you're buying into that price. And term and right. All right. You get LaRue's, everybody go. LaRue 10. He needs 20. He needs one more. And then who else did Who else didn't get it? Who else chose it? I'm gonna give Caleb. I'm gonna give Caleb because he's been playing, and uh, I'm gonna give him 20 because he's going to college. I'll pay for a semester. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got about $200 left here. What what, what else can I give it to? Oh, the missionaries. 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 Stand up. All you missionaries, stand up. Brother Warren. Here, give all of them $20. Oh, 
Is anybody adding all this stuff to keep me honest? Oh, Bernie, can you hear me? Are you awake? I take take your wife out for lunch at uh, Crystal or something. Two more twenties. Hey, there's one. There's a ten. Wait, 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 wait. You need two two more twenties. Let's see. You got. Who, who, who gets it? Did you get your 20? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay, uh, I got nine grandkids. and uh, <laughs> brother, uh, brother Warren. Go give him. That's a 50. Amen. 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 I met him at Crossville. At, Brother uh, Jones, uh, Brother Rowan. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-six, thirty-six, forty-six plus fifty. Who needs it? College? Can I give to the college? Yes. Amen. Amen. Nah. <laughs> now everybody that gave, do you mind if I gave it to that? I don't really care if you did. <laughs> Because it was mine. Uh, I gave that to a missionary couple going to India. They they go in and out. And uh, it was about 40 something dollars. That was a big a big amount. And um, they bought a, a guy who couldn't hear without a hearing ass apparatus. And they put it in. He was able to hear the what did I say? And he was able to hear the gospel. Amen. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. That's the most we've ever received. Amen. 700, notice this, 706. Do you remember how much I gave? Yes. Six. <laughs> Gave it out of my power. Okay, look at Second Corinthians eight. Now, I'm not going to keep you long. I hope Brother Bernie's got to. If he can wake up over there, he's going to draw something. <laughs> Some years ago, Coca-Cola had a advertisement. It was "Don't say the P word." And what it was, don't say Pepsi. And I don't really like those kind of commercials, one put another. So if Coke puts Pepsi down, I think I'll go buy a Pepsi. If uh, Post Toast is put down Kellogg's, I go buy Kellogg's. If Visa puts down American Express, I say I'll show them. I'll go charge a bunch on American Express. They're not going to influence me. And if Ford puts down Mercedes Benz, I just dream a lot. <laughs> but uh, now you may think this is childish, and it probably is. But uh, I was talking to Ms. Kelly or somebody last night. When you laugh, you secrete endorphins, and a uh, merry heart doth the good like a medicine. What's the medicine for? Make you feel better. And this didn't got anything to do, except what it does on that verse. 
I got to thinking, some comedians, they spend all their life getting people to laugh, and they, laugh, and they live old age. Red Skelton, George Byrne, he was a heathen, and he lived past 100. I think Bob Hope's been dead two weeks, didn't know it, but he, you know. <laughs> But you, you think Merrill, whatever his name was, Beryl, Merrill, all those guys lived long, you know, and I think it's because they secreted them. I don't know why I said all that. <laughs> tonight, tonight I want to preach on some P words, okay? Here we go. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Now, we've talked every night about the grace of God in that first verse, all scriptural giving starts with the grace of God. And about their trial of affliction, the abundance of the joy. They had deep poverty. They were very poor people. I guess you'd say the poor people call them poor. All right, verse 3. For their power, there's a P word. All of you this week gave out of your power. You gave, uh, I guess, what, what you had earned. There's four reasons in the New Testament that tell us why we should work. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 through 12, that we might walk honestly toward them that are without. And number two, in that same verse, that we might lack nothing in what it's talking about, lack nothing that, of course, will bring God glory. Second Thessalonians 3.10, we're to work so we can eat. Number four, Ephesians 4.28, we're to work to have to give to him that needeth. I think sometimes God gives a group of people a need in the church, and then he gives another group the provision. And he wants to see if this group is going to trust him for it, and he wants to see if this group is going to share. And uh, we preach uh, Sunday morning on the poverty of Jesus. To me, two of the saddest verses. Every man went to his own house. Jesus went to the Mount, Mount of Olives. Jesus became poor for us. They gave out of their power. And then they went beyond their power, and that's what where we pull out of this the faith promise concept. Verse four, praying with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. There's a P word, and it's like begging, please, please, Paul, take up an offering. Verse five. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. They gave themselves to God and to the missionary. And you've given yourself to many missionaries. Now look at verse uh, 7. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence... And in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Some people call it grace giving. I speak not by commandment, but by the occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. Look over at verse 24. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. He's talking about prove the sincerity of your love. Fellas, how do you prove your love to your wife? We had four boys in our family. Didn't have any girls. And uh, when my wife and I got married, we went. I was in school in, in uh, New Orleans. And we lived in a one-room deficiency. <laughs> I th that thing was small. And uh, my wife had a throw rug in a little kitchenette, and she said she had wall wall carpet. <laughs> but um, our first anniversary came. Now, she was teaching on the Pontchartrain waterfront where all the rich people were. 
And uh, I had really about four part-time jobs. I was leading singing and working in a home mission Goodwill Center for kids. And I was checking out trucks at Sears, and I was mopping the floor at that place and waxing it. And um, there we were in that little room, and uh, our first anniversary came. Now, I didn't know what you're supposed to get women. So I bought her a real nice frying pan. And I think she wanted to use it. Hey, I did better the next, next year I bought her a hammer and saw. No. <laughs> now, you know what I bought her the next year? This is New Orleans. You know how hot and humid it is. I bought her a wool white uh, suit dress thing, whatever you call it. I don't think she ever wore it in New Orleans. But fellas, what I'm saying is, if you want to prove your love to your wife, you buy her something. And when I come home from these conferences, she said, you bring me a prize? So I bought some stuff the other day at the second chance. Happy hand. I bought her a a snowman cookie jar and a snowman candy jar. And you know what I'm going to do when I get home? Put it up in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, churches give you a basket full of fruit and put some candy in it, you know. And this preacher gave me a dozen golf balls, used ones. So, uh, I came home and uh, they went, she put them in an egg carton. And uh, my wife and I had to go out of town. I said, now let's don't forget to take all that fruit. We don't want to leave it here. So we're going down the freeway and we forgot it. And I said, oh, we forgot the fruit. She said, well, I put those eggs in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> now, it didn't help my game, but... Um, Next P word, look at verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. We preached on that Sunday morning. The Lord became poor. Uh, think about the poor lost souls who've never heard the gospel too. And here, and I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. In other words, they said they were going to do it, but they hadn't done it. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. You go ahead and give out of what you have, and the Lord will provide your faith promise. When I taught faith promise in Australia, I, t I said, now, you don't have to give till it comes in. I got to thinking, well, dummy, the missionaries need it every month. Um... It says, perform the doing of it. wonder if some uh, young people came to Pastor Rowan and said, Pastor, you know, uh, Easter's about to come up, and we'd like to put on an Easter pageant. He said, okay, you can do it, but you're going to have to practice every Saturday night. So they come up here every Saturday night, and they rehearse, and they rehearse, and they rehearse. And it gets near the time to have Easter, and he says, oh, young people, are you, when, when, what day are you going to do this? They say, oh, we don't want to. Put it on, we, we, we enjoy rehearsing. And a lot of people come to church and they rehearse missions. They sing, send the light. Air my, send me. They rehearse it. Instead of performing it. Amen. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. That their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. Now he's writing this to the Corinthians. As it is written, he that hath gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Now he's referring back to the Old Testament when God fed them in the wilderness. Equality giving, uh, when I was, when we were trying to get our first, we were on deputation trying to get our plane ticket and all that, 
at our church in Dayton, Ohio, uh, one Sunday, Brother Rickard, he's in heaven now, he came up and gave me five, five objects and I put them in his pocket. And then a fellow we called Smitty, he probably became a millionaire. I don't know if you ever saw Robert's Furniture Store in Florida. Uh, I won't go into detail, but it was a man in that church named Roberts who owned it. And he got to dealing in horses and like to lost his shirt and he sold it and the guy put the tea off and put a D. They sold more furniture than anybody east of the Mississippi River. Well, Smitty was a, uh, a salesman. I, my pastor recommended him there and he became one-fourth owner. He told me one time, he said, he said, Robert, I told the Lord I'd give him 90% of my profit. He said, but I couldn't sleep one night, and I told him I'd give him 100%. They opened a big store in Atlanta. But uh, Smitty gave me a colored piece of paper, and I stuck it in his pocket. Now, you know what, Brother Rickett? Brother Rickett gave me five ballpoint pens. He said, you can use these when you get to Australia. I guess he thought I was going to Outback or something. Smitty gave me a check for five hundred dollars. In God's sight, which was the bigger? Maybe that's all that Brother Rickard could afford. Down in twenty one, he has providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And he's talking about the offering being taken up there, and. Uh, they were going to take it to those that had need. Verse 23, we have a P word, partner. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. So, he's talking about being a partner. And you are partnering with missionaries. And the rewards that they get, you're going to get too. Matthew, is it Matthew 10, 20? If you give to, um, I better read that. Matthew 10, 42. Whosoever shall give to drink unto, no, 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet receiveth a prophet's reward. Now, prophets, before the Bible was written, they foretold what's going to happen. But the Bible's complete now. So a prophet or a preacher foretells what God has given. And he that receiveth a righteous man, that means an, another Christian, in the name of a righteous man shall be shall receive a righteous man reward. So when you give some to, something to somebody to get the gospel out, you're going to get the same reward, according to that verse. Now quickly, verse 2 of chapter 9, For I know the forwardness of your mind, for, that I, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia... Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. I want to ask you something. Do you, do you provoke people? You're supposed to provoke them to do the Lord's will. Verse 5, he talks about a bounty. A bounty is having um, a benefit more than what you need. Most people, most families here have two cars. And uh, he's talking about taking up a bounty. Verse 7, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, faith promise is purposeful giving. Um, the Bible talks about the tithe, 10%. The Jews gave more than 10%, so don't strut, you know. When you think about they, they gave a lot more. You give an offering, uh, alms was what they gave poor people. And faith promise is trusting God for what he has through you. Now, Sunday morning I didn't have $706. But tonight I had $706. And
and that money just was a channel through me so God's already got your faith promise and he wants you to trust him by faith and he he always has the need first when Abraham raised a knife above Isaac the ram was already there Verse 9, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. The next few verses, three things are given as to why we should give. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So, number one, it says, it supplies a want. You give because there's a need out there. And then it talks about many thanksgivings. When we give, it brings thanksgivings. Uh, probably Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Christmas costs too much. But I like Thanksgiving because you come together and fall leaves, depending, depending on where you live. And uh, you thank God for the country and the bounty, bounty uh, things he's given us but here's the main reason why you do it verse 13 whilst by the experience of this administration they glorify God for your professed subjection when you give you glorify God and when that money sends a missionary and they preach the gospel and someone gets saved that glorifies God For your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your what kind of distribution? Oh, liberal, that's a good word. How many are better liberal now than your worse son? Amen. Unto them and unto all men. He finishes up there. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. It's just hard to really describe the Lord Jesus sometimes. Quickly, jump over to chapter 10. Look at verse 15. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is what? When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you, your, according to our rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. So Paul said, when their faith was increased, then his ministry would be increased. You know, there, there are four ways you can increase your giving outreach. Number one, you can have a missionary family to quit. How to free up the money. You could have a missionary to die and pass away. That frees up money. Or you could add members to the church who would take, take up faith promise. Or your faith could increase. Pastor's going to give these out Sunday. And uh, it's, it's like that. And you're not to put your name on this small section. But you pray about what God wants you to give or what you want him to give through you. And you put that on there and that'll be your vote for missions come Sunday. Sunday. 